And good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Talking Sports. I'm Sergeant Rock. Joe Stovall will be along shortly. We got Mike Cox back here in the captain's chair. Here's what we're going to be talking about today. The line out there on the hot streak. Their winners are two in a row. I'm thinking Big Ten Championship, Mike. This year? Yeah. Okay. All right. Also, uh, former New Orleans Saints safety, Darren Sharper, he surrendered to L.A. police yesterday. Former Packer, too. Yeah, he was a Packer a long time ago. Yes, he was. He's suspected of sexually assaulting nine women in five different states. Yeah. That gets the FBI's attention. Yeah, they got a whole bunch of people's attention. All right, uh, instant replay starts in uh, Major League Baseball this year. They're already trying it out in spring training, uh, I mean, in spring expedition games. Why do they call baseball preseason games expedition games? Exhibition but, games? Exhibition games, but uh, they're preseason in basketball and football. Then talking to Darren Sharper, I don't know. I don't know either. Barry Switzer, you know, he used to uh, coach the uh, – Dallas Cowboys, and now, isn't he coaching Oklahoma? Oklahoma, or something? yeah. Yeah. He, co- too, yeah. he says he never would recruit a white quarterback. Anymore? No, he said he never would. It's we'll bad. tell you. We'll tell you what he said. The first female player to play a professional f- pro football game made her debut last week. Oh, why couldn't they even block for the little lady? I can't say. Did, did you Did you see the clip? I did see the video. Why didn't they block for the little but, lady? But, she got up. Yeah, yeah, that she did. We'll tell you who she is. And uh, let me see. Oh, that's the headlines. We got all that and more coming up on this edition of Talking Sports. You be sure to stay tuned. Welcome back to Talking Sports WBCP 1580, UPTV Channel 5. Six. Six. 99. <laughs> Something like that. 99 on. You, you, you verse. You know that you know that now, don't you? I know that now. I even went and checked it out. It's there. Right. Now I got a question right now before we even go any further. Are you either planning on robbing a bank or a convenience store or your head just cold? Head just cold. Okay. I, you just had me a little nervous right now. Oh, and, it don't look right? Uh, well, you never it's, look it's, right. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's different. Sitting back here in the captain's chair today is uh the one the only, Captain Kirk. James T. Kirk. If you're a Star Trek fan. Mm-hmm. Hey, before we go any further, Joe, with the show, we want to uh, uh, send our condolences out to the Evans family. Uh, you know, Champaign-Urbana lost a, a, a gentleman, a scholar. He was a father to many girls and, and, and boys here and boys here in this town. He was a longtime member involved with uh, the Don Moyers Boys and Girls Club. And that's Mr. CCF. That is correct. And just to add, even on the fact that uh, a lot of us are grieving from the loss of CC, as he was finally known by most folks in the community, uh, if you'd like to continue his legacy, you can donate to the CC Evans Memorial Fund, which was set up today at First Federal Bank, First Federal Savings here in Champaign Urbana. So if you'd like to go out and make a contribution uh, to continue that legacy is what you just described, you could do that at First Federal Savings here in town. I think most folks know about the one was on Neal Street. Yeah. Uh, but any branch in Champaign-Urbana will take your donation. So just our way as former Boys Club members. No, I, I never was a member. Of you were never a club member? Oh, well, I was, grew up over in the band. You yeah. know, by... We Hay School, formerly now a King School, but well, you know we. So you were yeah. King Park, as we would like to say. Yes, yes, sir. yes, I was. Because you know, there was always three distinctions growing up. You were either King Park. That's where we were. Douglas Center, or Boys Club. It was a boys Club. That was that was how we distinguished. And you know what's funny is that uh, the way you described, you lived over by Hay School. There was you know certain families who lived in that area, and so you, you got to play and commiserate. Mm-hmm. With all the people in the neighborhood, same thing with Boys Club. We were the same, you know. You figure that was uh, anything north of University Avenue, south of Washington, west of Sixth Street, east of First Street. That was Boys Club. Mm-hmm. Douglas Center. That was everything around the park, and most of your 
public housing back in the day. Right, right. Bradley Park, Birch Village, the Manors, uh, Dunbar Court. That was that was Douglas Center. Mm -hmm. So it's just amazing how things have changed with transportation, social media, etc. The intermingling, commingling of people, of people, yeah. and and neighborhoods. But yeah, but I. I want to commend you for doing that because, you know, CC meant a lot, to, uh, as you said, to a lot of boys and girls in the mm -hmm. community. And, you know, I know I met CC through the boys club system when I was a preteen teenager and a lot of fine memories. I, so, made, him out of, I made him out to U of I, the Afro-American Culture Center, uh, back when I was uh, cutting my teeth in radio at uh, WBML. You remember WBML? Yes. Are they still? Are they? Do they still do anything out there? Well, you know, years ago it was you know it was like that campus radio that you could only pick up if you right, lived right. in the dorms. Or you had cable. Or you had cable. There you go. And if hey, if you got speaker wire, you always got cable. <laughs> I don't know where I learned that from. Uh, well, come on now, don't be giving away my secrets. Between that and aluminum foil, you can yeah. pick up anything. Yeah. Or a garbage can top, satellite receiver. Hint, hint. <laughs> Sad. I know, but it works. Right. So, uh, without further ado, we got to give him one. Got to give CC the WBCP moment of silence. Hey, yeah. man. All right. Let's talk some sports. The line I. Lord bless their heart. I mean, you know, really. Winners are two in a row. They're on a the hot streak. Yes. I mean, they look good. Actually, okay, they look decent. I was gonna say, <laughs> pull that horse. <laughs> this is not the Kentucky Derby. All right. You do not have to run out of the gate they like that. They look decent the other night against yeah. Nebraska. Home game. Mm -hmm. Crowd of about uh, 12,000. Did they get a come on down again? Uh, no. They didn't give it this trip? No. Anyway, a crowd of about 12,000. Enjoy the decent ball game from the Illini. Once again, the two freshmen, Hill and Nunn, stepped up. Uh, they scored what, uh, combined, what, 23 points, I think it was, something like that, mm -hmm. to help lift the uh, Illinois to victory. Same exact score as the Minnesota game. 60-49. They beat Nebraska. Remember a couple weeks ago when we were talking about this? When you make shots, when you make shots, things look different. Mike had made a comment about ball sharing. That'd be a different subject. I know. But sharing the basketball and allowing other guys to get involved. To get involved. You talked about Kendrick Nunn and Malcolm Hill and the elevation of their confidence because they've been starting as regulars now for since the Penn State game on the road. But just getting playing time. Right. Second the reemergence of Nana Egwu. He's starting to make a couple of buckets here and there that he wasn't making when they were going through the streak, the losing streak. I think other guys are recognizing that they actually need, just like I said to you about pulling the reins on that horse, they need to do that on their game. Those are those upperclassmen that we talked about a week or two ago who well, I was saying need to be replaced. You said they need to be replaced, and what Gross has done, he hasn't replaced them, but he's reduced them, mm -hmm. well, and he's and he's done it in a great job. Yeah, I think he's also taken the pressure off Iki and uh, Bertrand. Yeah. By those are the first two guys off the bench, so you guys don't have to go out and win the game for us. Right. This, I mean, Iki's played incredibly well since. Well, for him compared to what he was doing earlier, <laughs> he, he's played very well since Hill and Nunn have been in the starting lineup yeah. taking their spot. I mean, he comes off the bench, he hits a couple three three-pointers, mm -hmm. plays incredible, yeah, white boys can jump defense, <laughs> and, you know, they're winning. Yeah. And I think it's, 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 you know, you guys said that they're playing good. I think it's even, when you consider who the two teams are that they beat and how – Illinois got beat by those two teams the last time they played them. Mm -hmm. I mean, they went in Nebraska and got spanked. We were talking about that here. They just got thumped. Mm -hmm. And they come out and uh, was it the kid that went for 33 on Nebraska? Siobhan Shields, sure. I think it is. Mm -hmm. He had, what, nine, maybe? I think, if that. Seven, I think it was seven. <clears throat> and 
in uh, Trayvon, uh, or Pedway. Tehran Pedway, mm -hmm. Tehran Pedway, whatever. He ends up with 13, but he got all those toward the in the second half of the second half. Right. When they so, were already down double digits. Yeah, right. Exactly. I so, think uh, the, the, the thing that these games have shown you, and we talked about this with other Big Ten teams, there's really the margins between Michigan and last place. I won't even say a team. I'll just say last place. The margin between Michigan and last place is that. And what I mean by that is that if you notice, let's use Nebraska as an example. Nebraska goes to Michigan State and beats Michigan State at their spot. Now, Michigan State arguably is a top 10 team, you know, when they have all their guns at their disposal. Which will be next week. Right. From what I heard. They're a top 10 team. Nebraska goes in there and beats them like a rented mule, comes back on the road to Illinois, and Illinois beats them like a rented, like a rented mule. Michigan goes on the road to Purdue. They're down 19. They have to go into overtime and get a last second put back. That was a to win a game. They go home the week prior and Wisconsin spanks Michigan at their spot. Then Wisconsin goes on the road, beats Iowa. Iowa goes to Minnesota and loses to Minnesota. Bad. Bad. And then Illinois comes into Minnesota and beats. So the point is that, like I said, that margin is so small in the Big Ten. If you number one it starts with defense. And I think that's one of the things that Gross has done in terms of keeping the energy level on the defensive end of the court for this team. Number two, we talk about making shots. You just, you can't escape it. If you put balls in the basket, you're going to have a better chance of winning. And it helps your defense a lot, right? too. And number three, and more importantly, turnovers. Handle the basketball, gives you more possessions more possessions to put the ball in the basket. If you're shooting at a 50% clip and you keep your turnovers at 10 and under, you got a great chance to win the basket. Nebraska had, what, 23 turnovers, something like that? It's crazy. And, and Yeah, and I think Illinois scored something like 40-something points off a of turnover. Yeah, right, exactly. So so, so there you have it. Uh, what, they had 11 steals. Revante mm -hmm. Rice had three of those. Mm -hmm. So it was just uh, good basic defense all the way around. Right. And, and, and the good part about the freshmen stepping up and starting to play, and, and let's give a shout out to Kendrick Nunn, first freshman of the week in mm -hmm. 10, 15 years or something like that, whatever it is. But it's helped Revante relax, I think, and get back to what he does incredibly well, and that's play defense, body up people, steal, right. throw in whatever he throws in, 8, 10, 12 points. Right. Um, something I heard on the Big Ten Network this morning, compliments of my call, this is – either the first or second time in history that every Big Ten basketball team has at least five wins in conference. Right. So, I mean, that, that you know, the, the parity's there. And as you were saying, the, the difference between first and last is just, it's right. major thin. And, so. and, and I think where I would wrap, <clears throat> first you, in, in terms of expansion of the conversation, uh, Illinois has got three games left. Michigan, Michigan State, and I forgot who the third might be Iowa. Now, the last home game is Tuesday against Michigan. Then they go on the road to Michigan State. Mm -hmm. Iowa. No, they have Michigan State right. tomorrow. Michigan State tomorrow, then right. Michigan last game, then Iowa. Have my ducks not in a row. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Imagine. Hey, <laughs> cheap seats. Cheap seats. I'm checking the schedule for you. No, no, no heckling from there. But the point is, we talked last week, uh, a couple weeks ago, about postseason play, and you was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. they going to the Big Ten tournament. Right. But they also, even if they don't win the Big Ten tournament to get into the NCAA tournament, they still have an opportunity with their record right now. Was it 16 and 12? NIT or the CBI? Now, people can frown on it and say, yeah, if you're not going to. Mike talked earlier about freshmen. You want to play. Even if you don't make it to the big dance, you want to keep playing because it gives them more, more practice time. That's it. Yeah. And not only more practice time, more game time, game situations. 
because we've talked about this. But all these fresh, the, the best thing that freshmen do is they become sophomore. Mm. The other thing it'll do is now going into that 14-15 schedule, you've got three additional, four additional games, whatever they get, you know, when they play in these postseason tournaments that you can use for film study and preparation going into that season. So two-game winning streak, hey, the roof's not going to fly off over there at State nah. Farm Center. But we happy for them. It changes that psyche. Remember when uh, Dr. Bates was here a couple weeks ago? Mm-hmm. And he talked about how fragile that the psyche of an athlete is. This here, I think, has really in- infused some positive energy into the fighting line of men's basketball team. One, two, y'all. And from, cool. a, <laughs> from a schedule huh? standpoint, they have Michigan State tomorrow. Yeah, can't nobody hear you from way back there. I'm going to tell you that right now. Well, he's got to be able to see. He's, his they memory won't allow him to carry that here to here. Remember, I started this back in the fourth. Michigan State tomorrow, Michigan on the fourth, and at Iowa on the eighth of March. Did y'all hear that? Yeah, come up here and repeat that again. Michigan State tomorrow. tomorrow Michigan on the fourth of March, and a week from tomorrow, Iowa at Iowa away. City. Right. See, they so they have That's how you remember it. You go Iowa. All right, very good. Very good. Thank you very much, Mike. You're welcome. Thanks for looking that up. <laughs> See, I told you he would be useful. <laughs> On occasion. And today is the occasion. Yeah, but, you know, c- c- congrats to, to, to the Atlanta. And we, and we hope we hope their winning ways continue. Now, yeah. you know, Michigan, going up to Michigan uh, State to play them, you know, like you said, they're healthy now. So do we look to see an entirely different ball game or what? Well, I think you're going to see three things. Number one, uh, you've got to match Michigan State's intensity because Brandon Dawson, their ultra-talented power forward, he's back. Got the pins removed from his hand last week. Uh, former McDonald's All-American, just a man amongst men down in the post. Adrian Payne, six foot eleven, do whatever he wants. Shoot the three dunk on you, handle the ball. Keith Appling, wrist is starting to improve. Gary Harris, probably the best two guard in the entire Big Ten. Mm-hmm. Uh, got a slew of guys who got great. I think the thing for Michigan State, by all these guys being injured, it gave bench players more playing time. Now they, I mean, these guys go probably 11 deep, 12 deep. Michigan State, Whew. Now they can be beat at Ah, I'm not saying they can't be beat. But they've had guys here and there out. This is the first time in probably two months that they had their entire team. And this is back when Michigan State was ranked top five in the nation. So this would be probably the most daunting task that Illinois will have this season is going to play there in East Lansing. Okay, as the Big Ten uh, season is wrapping up, Big Ten tournament starts in, what, two weeks? Three weeks? Mm-hmm. Like that. No, so, the, the week the ninth or something like that. No, the week after, 13th and 15th. All right, mm-hmm. it's two weeks. Yep. Big Ten tournament starts in two weeks. Uh, who's your front runners? Obviously, you got to go with Michigan since they've been at the top the entire season. Wisconsin, definitely, you got to put them in there. In Michigan State, those are your three. If you had to pick a sleeper, my sleeper team would be Iowa. And if my super dark horse would be a team like a, a, a Nebraska, if they got. Okay, I mean, you stated earlier that, you know, the Big Ten team top to bottom is sort of like the difference between the teams. Like, that couldn't this be anybody's tournament. What are they playing at, by the way? Indianapolis. Indianapolis? Mm-hmm. Couldn't this be anybody's tournament? Always could be anybody's tournament. I, I think, you know, when you look at the lower tier teams, the Illinois, the Penn States, the Indianas, they have enough talent. The thing is about when you're playing at that lower level, you got to play on Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Saturday and Sunday, and you got to win on Sunday. Fatigue becomes the true enemy of those teams. There, can you sustain not only the physical ability to play four outstanding ball games, but can you stay mentally focused to play at a high level? Because think about it: you play on Thursday, you get mm-hmm. your feet wet, and you win. That Friday game, that's where the upset happens because the team, they come in cold. 
And they're playing not to lose. They're not playing to win. You're the underdog. Hey, let's let it ride. Bang, you get that second victory on Friday. Now Saturday, you've got that energy, that confidence, the enthusiasm. I think we can take, all we got to do is win Saturday and we'll be there on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And now you win Saturday. And now it's just you and one team that separates you from the NCAA tournament. Can you keep your mental focus for 40 more minutes? Knowing you're probably playing a, one of those teams we named off of the Michigan State, mm -hmm. Wisconsin, Iowa, in, you know, whoever. That would be the issue. A team like Indiana, that youthful exuberance that they have, and they're playing in Indianapolis, don't be surprised if they get on a run like that. Well, and Illinois had luck in Indianapolis, too. They've, mm -hmm. they, they've had good success, I should say. And I think the, the biggest question between now and that Sunday, whatever date that is, is can Iowa hold somebody under 90 points? And <laughs> if, if they don't stop playing Ole defense, right. they'll be done by Friday night. Yeah, I think that style of basketball they play, exciting for the fans in Iowa City. It's, the players like it because everybody get multiple t touches and mm -hmm. multiple buckets. But, but as Mike said, beat. you know, when I had the uh, Bronco, Bronco loseritis. Oh, you remember? Yeah, I remember vaguely. You know, my doctor talks to me about that every year. What reminds you? Defense wins championships. And we just talked earlier about the way Illinois is playing defense and some of these other teams are playing defense. And Iowa can't go in there thinking they're going to jack up. Uh, 33s a game. Right, and have 60 shots on, on basket and, you know, have scores in the 80s and 90 in the tournament and think they're going to advance. Because mm -hmm. they're, they're definitely not crazy. Right. Tournament basketball is so totally different. You know, first of all, tournament basketball is truly survive in advance. All you want to do is win. It doesn't matter if you only score 40 points, 50 points, whatever it is. You want to just survive in advance. Well, just lose or go home. Right. And think about it. If you're accustomed, Mike brings up an excellent point about Iowa. If you're accustomed to just jacking shots, jacking shots, and now you get into these limited possession games where everybody's milking the shot clock and Milk in the shot clock. That sometimes can become very frustrating to, you know, just like I said about that thoroughbred that wants to come out of the gate hard, and now there's 20 other horses in the way, and you just can't go the way you want to go. Sometimes you shut down. No, you get a nice spot to pack, and you just ride along until it's time for you to make that move. And sometimes you can't make that move because you get stuck on the rail. So That's the place to be. So, yeah, the tournament, like I said, it's the week of the 13th through the 15th, so. All right. Speaking of on the rail, Kentucky Derby, when is that? May, May 1st. May 1st. First Sunday. Dang. First Saturday. Saturday. They'll be running in the snow. <laughs> if the weather keeps going the way it is. I right? know. We're supposed to get 48 inches between Saturday and Sunday. And then I've heard 7 to 13. Uh, all I know is that. Hey, well, one is too many. Considering the fact we're in the month of March. I know. Going into the month of March. Matter of fact, daylight savings time starts next week. Yeah. On the 8th. So, speaking of the 8th. Speaking of the 8th, let's move forward. No, no, uh, speaking of the 8th, let's move forward. forward. Yeah. You are moving forward. I'm right? moving forward. Let's move forward. Yeah, let's look, talk sports. No, let's talk sports. No. I, I'm okay. I'll I talk to you. i talk to you about that. Right. You know, Joe had a birthday party on. Let's move forward and talk sports. He turned 50 years old. I hope that looked that good when I turn 50. I really do. That would, that would, be, a, that would be amazing. <laughs> He's got a way back machine. <laughs> Him and Marty McFly are hanging out, I guess. Who? Professor! <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, uh, let me see. And we, you know, we forgot to mention the Daytona <coughs> 500 last week. Oh, in terms of we what our predictions were? Well. But did you watch it? I caught the beginning of it. And then you went out and worked for eight hours? And, and I came caught back. the end of it. <laughs> well, you know, they had, what, like a three, four-hour rain delay, though. Six. Was it six hours? Man, they started in the morning and yeah. fired back up. It was dark. I was like, dog, oh, man. But it was, man. We great definitely race. can talk about when we come back because it was a great race. Yeah, great race. I thought uh, Danica Patrick was going to finish. She jumped out of her car like she gonna whoop somebody. There you go. She fight air. Huh? She gonna whoop air. Yeah. She, she was looking for Richard Petty. That's what she was looking for. <laughs> and he was sitting up there just laughing with his 
STP. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, like she ain't gonna never win a race. Man, it looks like he's right. Yeah, I know. Anyway, uh, we'll be back with more talking sports right after. This. Welcome back. Talking Sports WBCP 1580 UPTV Channel 5. 6. 6. 99 on you. 99 U-verse. 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 Veronica. Chilling. What up? Just the smoothest camera. Right. Yeah. Give your head nod. And yeah. Go right back to her phone. She's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I got another hour with these idiots. This is ridiculous. Let me call somebody. Mighty right. Somebody who cares. Mom. What you doing? Uh, not not listening to talking sports. You should see these bozos on the other side of the window. And if you want to see these smiling faces, seven to nine a.m. on what? UPTV. Saturday morning, seven o'clock to nine. Right. Channel. Or you can go on YouTube. You know. You can watch us as much as you like. Man. Yeah. Lupus. Wink. <laughs> 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 we went to a commercial break. We were talking about Big Ten basketball, Illinois, two-game winning streak. Talked about the tournament a week away. Right now, it looks like Michigan, with three losses in the conference, is going to be the regular season champion. Unless, you know, some strange things happened in this last week. Michigan State's right there, but they lost both games to Michigan, so it'll be kind of hard for them to leapfrog them. Mm-hmm. Wisconsin, two games back with, what, three, four left to play, so. Those three teams are the teams that will decide the regular season. Uh, I mean, how many teams do you think coming out the Big Ten going into the tournament? I'm thinking five-ish. I think you are correct. I think right now, Michigan, Michigan State, Wisconsin, uh, Iowa, Ohio State. Ohio State, and then your ifficiest ones are the Nebraska's. No, Minnesota, no. Minnesota. Not Nebraska, not after this woman they just took from Illinois. Well, well, but then you can't put. Iowa I, in I, that wouldn't group even, I wouldn't even put them on a on a, on the on the bubble, so to speak. Then yeah. you got you got to take Iowa out of the mix, then, right? Because they got bumped the past two games they played. I I would I would have to. It, we got solid five, as everybody's indicated, but the tournament I think is going to determine those t- the Nebraskas, the Minnesotas, the Iowas, where they get slotted and. You know, do they get in first of all? And if they do get in, how are they seated? You know, um, my question would be: I know this is super premature because we got about two two weeks ago before we get to the actual naming of all sixty five teams in the tournament. But do you think this is the year that a one seed is going to lose to a sixteen seed in the NCAA tournament? We've never had that happen. It's Two not, have lost. It's three not gonna happen this year either. But you don't think uh, one seed will lose this no, year? No. Who do you think? Not will, the first round. Based on what's happened this year, who do you think would be one seed? Uh, Syracuse. I didn't like. They lost two in a row. What's up with that? Hey. After being undefeated, what last week? I think that's that part. I. I talk about before when you're undefeated pretty soon you start playing the record and not the team you're just trying to stay undefeated and I think that caught up to him okay uh, let me see Syracuse uh, this is TV and radio you... yeah I, well I'm thinking I don't even know who to talk oh I forgot you have your thinking cap on I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even know who the four top teams are yeah, he said I'm thinking uh, let's, go, let's go with Syracuse. Arizona. Arizona. Okay, Arizona. You put Wichita State in or no? Uh, Regardless of what, how they finish up. Come on, what are they rated? What are they, fifth? They're rated fifth? No, fourth? they're like third, I think. Third? Uh, put Only them in. undefeated team in the nation. 30 and 0. But see, it would be up to those uh, people whether or not to put them there at the uh, – and a one seed. Obviously, if they go through the season undefeated, they should be a one seed. But you know how fickle if, some of them people are once they get there around the chair. What if they don't win their tournament? If they don't win a tournament, I, that that does knock them out. But I would, if I had to name as of today, before we even get to the tournament, I'd say Florida has got to be a one seed. Wichita State's got to be a one seed. Um, Kansas, 
got to be a one seed. And then from the West Coast, uh, maybe Arizona. I'd say a, a maybe in reference to that. But that, that would be my four number one seeds. And the reason why I made the comment about uh, a 16 beating a one, let's use Arizona as an example. Arizona has had some issues the past couple weeks. You know, they've lost a couple games, and they've not looked as strong as they did at the beginning of the year. Wichita State plays in the Missouri Valley. No disrespect to the Missouri Valley, but other than Wichita State, who else in terms of a strong team in the Missouri Valley? Is Creighton there? Creighton's in the Missouri Valley. Yep. yep. So you got Doug McDermott, but – Sergeant mm -hmm. alma mater, SIU. Yeah. But, you know, no mama's boys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bob, you know, boy. we look at the Big Ten. We talked earlier in the show. Big Ten teams are beating themselves up, so there's not a clear dominant team in the Big Ten. So even if Michigan or Michigan State won the tournament, you can't I, – I couldn't see making them a one seed. Oh, no. no. You know, so, no. so that there. Um, if you go East, Duke no. has some issues. Syracuse, they had a nice run, and like you said, they've lost a couple in a row. So that, to me, that kind of takes them out. Team like Virginia, a lot of people don't talk about. 15 and one in the ACC, right? Leading the conference. So, you know, there, there, there's more. There, this year is probably the one year that you could say there's probably 15 teams that have legitimate shots of winning the tournament, of actually just going in and winning this thing. But in terms of that one team that just is head and shoulders above, you know, you go back. UNLV back in the early 90s where they just blew everybody, you know, off the court. The Georgetown teams of the 80s with Patrick Ewing and those teams. Um, well, and even the, the Duke teams that were right there with UNLV back in the early 90s. Right, but Hurley Georgetown and people. Grant Hill. Leitner. Leitner, and Leitner right. Kentucky, a couple years ago, that freshman team. Uh, go to early 90s with Michigan in the Fab Five. The second year. The Fab Five the first year was more of, I think, kind of that storybook deal. Mm -hmm. But their sophomore year, that was a dominant basketball team. Them guys were great. Filling out your bracket should be very, very interesting this year. And you know Warren Buffett, the great investor, the man who owns Geico and many other things That's in the world, America. has offered a billion dollars. One billion dollars. You know what the odds are on a perfect bracket? Not very good. They are so high, he's comfortable with a million dollars. <laughs> Warren Buffett just ain't going to put a million dollars out there. The way that I, I've heard it before, I, I can't quote it, but I, it, they've created a word for it. It's the chances of hitting it. It's like bazillion. Some ridiculous math. Basically, you could win like the Mega Millions, the Powerball. The lottery. You've got super better odds of winning that Bad. than getting a perfect bracket. Well, I mean, when you look at what you got to do to get a perfect bracket, it's just, I mean, you start off with, what, 68 teams? Isn't that right? Yeah. You start off with 68 teams, right. and you got to, you got how many games? Uh, well, if it's 68 together? teams, you got 68 mm -hmm. games. That's the way uh, you would look at it. All right. You got to win all 68 games. And think about the combinations of every game. It changes. Right. Yeah, I mean, all, it cha and it, all it has to do is change one team. Mm -hmm. And it changes the whole formula. And that's the reason why the uh, odds are so great of you even winning this thing. Is because you have a 68-game combination. And you can, the factor, all you have to do is change one factor in it. It flips the whole board. But they're fun to do. Definitely fun. To Just do. to see if you can. Now, you know, we talked about one seed upset in the 16 seed. You don't think it's going to happen this year. I, I, I tend to believe that this would probably be the year. And the reason why is I look at using the example of the Big Ten. When you've got that margin of error is so small from last to first, and now you take the field and put them in there, and – you know, you think about who that's – because here's the other thing you got to remember. That 16 seed could be a – doesn't always have to be that bad team from that super bad conference. Warhead State or something like 
there you go. The Mississippi Valley State. That's who it's going to be, though. You know. No, nah, that's because here's the thing: the playing games changes that formula now. Yeah. Remember, it used to be just 64 teams, and <clears throat> you're number 16. You're bad. I'm putting you here. Mm-hmm. Well, the play-in game determines a couple of those 16 seeds. And it could be a team with, just like what we described with the Big Ten tournament. You you went on a Tuesday. You play that play-in game and went on a Tuesday, and then you come and play on that Thursday. Well, it's going to be interesting to see. Especially this year. Because, you know, we, we stayed at the beginning of the basketball season. There wasn't really no dominant team playing in, this, in, in, in the uh, NCAA mm-hmm. this year. I think a, a good example of your 16 beating a one seed is, you know, Boston College beat Syracuse. Mm-hmm. And Boston College, I think, is still like 12 games under 500 or right. something like that. So They suck. And beat Syracuse. At in, Syracuse. Right, in the dome. So now you get a neutral court. That even takes away the home court advantage. I mean, there's there's a lot of factors that have to go into this thing. Got to hit your threes. When, when you're that underdog team, you got to be able to hit your perimeter shots. Because if you don't, now everything collapses. You can't get to the basket. You usually don't have enough athletic ability. Right. You know, we look back last year, Gulf Coast, out of Florida, Florida Atlantic. That team was unheard of. They utilized the three and transition buckets. They played freestyle basketball, <coughs> beat Georgetown, beat San Diego State. Yeah, had a nice little run there right. for a minute. And that's what I'm saying. And we didn't, and nobody saw that coming. I bet you if you looked at every bracket in America, tell me who picked nobody, nobody. Gulf Coast, Florida, Atlanta. Probably in you know, a long. That'd be about there you long. go. There you well, go. I look at back in the early 90s, remember it was when Nova won the, the championship. They mm-hmm. were like a 13 seed or something like who? that. Who? Illinois. Oh. Right. So, yeah, you know, teams can sneak in there. So, this is where now, you know, we go into this issue of uh, the one and dunners, the Kentuckys. Kansas, the teams that get all the McDonald's All-Americans and they load up for that one run and then, you know, those guys go to the NBA. Contrast that with a Doug McDermott and Creighton or Wichita State, which these guys have been able to stick around for three, four years, be cultivated by the program, learn their system, and now you've got 21, 22-year-old men playing against 18, 19-year-old boys. And the men know each other like the back of their that's it. That's why Wichita State's in the field. That's why Kentucky loses to Arkansas last night. Well, yeah. Wichita State's in the field because they're really good. Right. Well, that. But how did they get yeah, really right, good? Right. It, they got to develop it. Right. And right. you know, and everybody thinks that you can go out and bring these, you know, bona fide All American superstars right in out of high school, and think they are going to consistently beat these guys. What you're starting to see now is that mental aspect. These guys are good, number one. They have to be good physically. But I think they've gone through the the, the, the battles, and they're battle-tested. So they've seen everything. And these young guys, I think when they get in these pressurized situations, they've never been in a pressurized situation because when they were in high school, they always won by 20 and 30. Right, right. Well, yeah. and, 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 the, and the young guys don't necessarily – because you got, you know, you're from out west, sorry from out east, I'm from down south somewhere. Mm-hmm. We – haven't played together and we haven't had enough experiences like the Wichita State team mm-hmm. this year to see, I don't know how Sarge is going to react in this particular situation we're down by six, right. got the ball 30 seconds left. Not to mention, I might not even like you. Well, yeah, that too. Because <laughs> you are in the ball last game. <laughs> <laughs> but with the, you know, your, your, your Doug McDermott's at Creighton and your Wichita State's and whatnot, they've, right. they've been through all the wars, they know each other so, it, I mean, and they know how each other should react in a given situation. I think the final thing I'll say on the pre-pre-NCAA tournament is that you mentioned a Doug McDermott. We've seen it in the past where a team has that stud superstar. Indiana State. And he says, get on my back, let's ride. And McDermott is that kind of guy where he can fill it up for 30-plus a night, and if he can drop 30-plus, and his supporting cast can do what they do and play good defense, this is how those teams – get into the Sweet 16 and Elite 8 and one of those teams shows up in the Final Four because they know what their formula is. When it's the you know, Superstar, Kansas, Kentuckys, the Dukes. Now the question is, we're in a press situation. You shoot it. No, you shoot it. 
No, I'm going to shoot it. And we don't shoot it. Right. And now we look up, there's two minutes left on the clock, we're down eight, and we don't know who's going to be the guy. So give it's going to be. Give me the ball. It's going to be it. Give you the ball? I'll shoot it. I, well, we know you'll shoot it. The question is, will you make it? Law of averages states. If I put it up there enough times, at least one of going to go in. We just don't need you to be one for 50 in the NCAA game. Yeah. All right. Uh, of course, you know, baseball season has started. Spring uh, training has started. As a matter of fact, exposition games have already started being played and every, everything. And, of course, you know, this is the first year that uh, Major League Baseball is going to implement. Instant replay. Instant replay. Yes, I'm happy. Hmm? I'm happy. The last, the last Welcome. and final Frontier. major league sport. Uh, Welcome to the they don't, have, they don't have this to replay in soccer. It's not the major sport. Soccer's not a sport. Right. Major sport. It's just for the rest of the world. Nah. You know, it's arrogant Americans. Yeah. There's only four sports for us. Okay. Football, baseball, basketball, hockey. Anyway, basketball. they start. They started basketball. it this year. Uh, they they don't have it. They won't have it for everything. Uh, let me see. Left turn, left turn. Straight, straight, straight. Left turn, left turn. Yep, the system will cover almost every every play except balls and strikes, check swings, uh, trap ball. Uh, uh, one minute. Yeah, trap ball in the infield and the so-called neighborhood uh, neighborhood play. You know, that's when. Second base on the double. <coughs> yeah, you know, y'all are. Nah, they really should. And that's where I told you last year. They, they really should use it on that one because that, that's ridiculous. Right? When a guy kicks dirt at the bag, he ain't even near the bag. When they, when, they, when they get away with something like that. Catch the ball. Then, the, oh, the transfer, he's, he's still out. It was a – no. I'm glad they're doing it. It's still a step in the right direction. It's still not enough. You know, I, I think instant replay is still not implemented properly in all the major sports. You know, basketball – they have to wait till the last two minutes before they start, you know, doing things with it. Football, there's certain plays that can't be reviewed, can't be reviewed which yeah. is stupid. What's the purpose of replay if you're limiting it to certain plays? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What's the problem with re review? I mean, sometimes if you review everything, I mean, these games could go on forever. Not really. And I here's why I say it. What I don't like about, let's go with NFL. If the play's being reviewed, who has to go see it? The Referee. official on the field. Why can't you have a guy in the booth? We sit at home. We make the call within 30 seconds when they show the replay. Oh, he was out of bounds. Big Ten football. What happens? There's a guy in the booth. He's watching the game. He buzzes down, says the play's under review. They're reviewing every play. That's what I'm saying. And it doesn't extend those games that long. But with Major League Baseball, I told you last year, all they need to do, get a, lawn, a big lazy boy and a flat screen high def TV and some snacks, and you can put anybody yeah, well, in the chair to make those. Well, some teams are hiring ex-umpires as, as uh, uh, consultants. consultants, yeah, to sit in the dugout because, see, every, every Major League ballpark is going to have their little – Little viewing screen, and mm -hmm. somebody sitting there watching it, and gonna let the manager know whether or not this particular play should be reviewed. Right now, they get something like one review during the first what six innings. If you're successful with that review, then you get another one. See, and that's stupid. That's that's what I mean. That's stupid because now you're giving the manager another responsibility. He's already managing the on the field game. He's already deciding where he's going to shift Mike over on the overload, whether he's going to pull you in, whether he's got to play shallow or deep in the outfield. He's already making those chess moves there. And now he's got to decide whether he throws the flag or not on a call on the field when it should just be done naturally by somebody sitting there reviewing the play. Yeah. And Well, all, all, all these – I mean, from all the ball games going on – all the calls are going to one guy in, I think, in New York or somewhere. So this one guy is going to make the official call on all instant replays. All the umpires. Mm -hmm. That's not going to 
somewhere on the backstop there's going to be a headset where he can go back and receive his instructions. And now you've got one guy watching all the games in the studio in New York. Which yeah. games are going to have to wait? Uh, Bingo. He's sitting there eating tacos. I missed that one. <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah. Hold Boo, on. Boo. Hello. Uh, oh, wait, I hit the wrong buzzer. buzzer. Hang on, Sorry, Philadelphia. I was trying to hit Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> is it going to be a... It's like the uh, B-Dubs commercial. Yeah. That's it. You, know, you got the guy just want to keep everybody here a, a little longer. But that's what... What is so difficult about putting somebody in the ballpark to up look in at... The up in the booth. Yeah, because they're watching it anyway. That's it. Well, and a good example where, where that would come in handy was a few years ago with uh, Galarraga in Detroit on the perfect game. Uh, where Jim Joyce... After he saw the replay, he's like, oh, my goodness, how could I have missed that? That's it. And if, if you've got a guy or a woman or a person watching it and they see that, I mean, anybody that saw it on TV in real time knew it was a bad call. Right. right. And you hit the I, buzzer, I, boom. I think they're trying to keep it all sent, uh, uh, what's the word? Centrally located? Uh, uh, yeah, you know, keep it all in a tight bundle. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you ain't got... X amount of number of guys making X amount of number of calls. You got this one guy making all the calls. Right? You, got, you got one guy trying to watch what? 15, 20 games? That's what you, imagine on a Saturday. <laughs> and, and you got games going on everywhere. And, and imagine the guy in New York watching the Oakland game at 3 o'clock in the flipping morning. Right. And he's been there all day. Yeah. Oh. There, there, there will <laughs> never be a replay on the West Coast. Can I go home? No, you yeah. still got two. No, uh, you know, I'm thinking maybe they got, you know, a number of guys. They're probably well, going to yeah. rotate, you know, right. but rotate still. them out. You know what I'm saying? But, but still, how can you watch 20 games at once? The point is this. Let's look at the NFL. You got early games. You got late games. You got games on Sunday. You got a game on Monday. Well, you got a game on Thursday. Thursday now, right. So imagine one guy. One guy. And you got screens all over the world, and you're trying to watch all those games and make those decisions. It can't oh, come be done. On, look, look. Yeah, why come and Look, I'm getting ready to give you an example. The producer of one NFL game sits down in the truck. How many camera angles do you think he looks at? Probably about the course of a ball. Probably about 13, 14 camera angles. Exactly. But he's now he's making a call on one game. He's not watching all the game. Go to camera three. Right. Fade out camera two. Buzz in camera one. There you go. And what do you do when, from a baseball perspective, is when the Mariners go over to Japan to play? Got a few hours. Oh, come on now. This is, this is the 2013. Yeah, Everything, 14, actually. Okay, 14. Mm -hmm. Close. Everything's in real time, man. So, so and that's the point. But th that's so exactly the point. If it's in real time and Mike's in Japan playing a game and you're in L.A. playing a game and something happens in L.A. real time and something happens in Tokyo real time, he's got to look at both. And remember, so what's your problem? Remember, in Tokyo, I'm a day ahead of you. Right. What's your problem? Or behind you, whichever one it is. Well, you just you, get you, to the day late, but you go. <laughs> <laughs> they late the dollar short. <laughs> I'll be buzzing you on Monday. But you go get it, though, in, in, in a matter of minutes. But it shouldn't be a matter but, of but, minutes. But baseball's already saying that games are taking too, too long. long. There you go, Mike. They want to they wanna get them under three hours. And if you've got, or two hours, whatever it is, or two and a half. Two and a half. Hours, two and a half. It is, yeah. But if you've got one guy who's watching. 20 ball games, and let's say in every single game at the – and this is probably not very likely, but, you know, Joe's the quantitative guy. So <clears throat> every single okay. game at the exact moment there's a play that needs to be reviewed. Who waits? There you go. Everybody. And he's wiping and, and, sauce off on his shirt. And, oh, hey, what everybody. Are, and, and how long do you, you think fans and sponsors are going to put up with six-hour baseball games? And then here's the thing. They're not because, as I've told you for years, you sports get, is about – right, you think, so think about this. Sports is being turned into a studio TV show, and the studio is the stadium.
and the audience is the studio audience and nobody at home wants to sit there longer who watches baseball today other than us old idiots but you know what i don't i don't think there's going to be that many uh uh replays well but, I really but, don't. but if they're if they're doing the neighborhood tag at second base that happens nine times a game right 18 times a game because both teams are doing turn of double play and that guy's just kicking dirt over there yeah I, I, but i'm i'm still pretty sure there's not going to be many replays on unless it's going to put us in scoring position doing a tight, you know, maybe a 1-1 one -one ball game. We're trying to get a dude If you think scoring. about, as, as a former baseball player and guy who watches baseball, the areas of, of, of review would be the bang-bang play at first. Right. You get a lot of those in baseball games. Stealing. The, the, the steal, the tag. Did he touch the bag before the tag? You'll get that from second and third. The play at the plate, you're going to get that. And then... Uh, what other home runs? Well, you know. Well, they're already doing that. They're right. doing that. Yeah. Tag up play on a fly ball. Mm -hmm. Did he leave or early? So now you're gonna have to split screen athlete on the bag, athlete out there catching the ball or touching the ball, because once it touches, he I think can go. he can go. Yeah, yeah, he can go. You know. So now we're gonna get to that technical side, and that's my point about there's so many areas that can be reviewed. One person can't do but, it. But but most of your old school managers. Are not going to uh, are not going to uh, replay those. They they they're not going to want to review because they know. Well, and, and, they know. and that's the thing that you know. Let, let's give the Major League Baseball umpires credit where credits due, and they are pretty daggum good about making the right call. They're about ninety eight point six percent dead so on. So if if you know whatever ninety eight ninety nine percent they're mm -hmm. always right. The managers that have been in the league for at least a year know who the good umpires are know who the crappy umpires are and it'll be the crappy guys that are are getting you know all the flags thrown because your call sucks mm -hmm. you know the yeah. angel hernandez's and, and whatnot the really bad umpires that nobody ever likes right so it, it'll be interesting to see then if major league baseball expands their not only expands that but uses that as an umpire greeting tool well yeah. What do you think about what's happened with the NFL? <coughs> because of instant replay, a lot of calls don't get made. Well, they get yeah. what well, the NFL is thinking about, and they're already going to try it uh, during the preseason. Is just putting an extra man on the field, so they have eight uh, umpires, referees, officials instead of seven. What's the eighth guy going to do? He's going to pay attention more to the interior alignment. Basically because going back to the old days of having the umpire in the middle of the right. play. You know, because remember, they pulled the umpire. He's in the backfield back, with the right, referee right, right. until the last two minutes of the quarter or, or the half in the game, and then he goes back into that center position. To me, eight guys, six guys, ten guys, the way the NFL is now being officiated, like I said earlier, you got referees gun shy. I go back to... Navarro Bowman, a linebacker for the San Francisco 49ers, going against Seattle Seahawks. He literally rips the ball out of Jermaine Curse's arms, has the ball tucked. His knee has been shredded, and he's laying on his back and has the football. And not one referee had the, you know, to throw the beanbag at him and say, there's a fumble recovered by 49ers, 49ers football. When the play finished, Seahawks came out of the pile with the ball. Why is that? Because Bowman's now worried about his, his knee. Mm -hmm. The play is dead. He, uh, he's down like he's by getting up, yeah. Right, he's not going to get up. But because of the fact that these referees are now in this situation, we'll let replay determine it. And that was not even a review. That's the other issue. That play was not reviewable. Change of possession is not reviewable. Well, and, and here's the other thing. If they're going to put an eighth guy on the field in that same ball game, mm -hmm. I think it was on a punt, you got a Seahawk player gets bumped out of bounds on the 49er sideline. Mm -hmm. He's coming past Harbaugh, and one of the <laughs> one of the 49er players in civvies hip checks him. Gave him a little, hey, what's up? How you doing? Bam! Yeah. You know, so, and they can't even make that call. And, of course, 
Harbaugh went to Michigan. We all know how everybody around here feels about Michigan, but nevertheless. Hey, that that, that should be a uh, that's a penalty. Did they did should they, be? Did they get uh, a no. Pittsburgh coach for? Well, oh, yeah, his well, is a little obvious. Yeah. His uh, tiptoe through the two <clears throat> lips. You know, this tiny Tim dance. Trying to trying to get a good view. All he needed was a ukulele that day. Boy, am I dating myself. First yeah. I said tiny Tim and ukulele. What's next week? Let's let's move forward. Uh, okay, so, so so that's just the replay. We talked about the referees uh, coming in. Uh, what time is it? About eight after three. Eight after three. About All right. Well, time, no, not yet. We're gonna no, do one more. No. We're gonna do one more story. Right. Uh, like I said, uh, before we went out to our last break, we talked briefly about the Daytona 500. Accident race, rain delayed for about nine hours, ten hours. I know it started at 12. I think it ended at 12. 11.30-ish. Dale Jr. Yeah, he won. He won again. And you know, the irony of it is the number three car was out there on the track. Yes, I saw that. They brought the number three car back. Out of retirement. I'm wondering, psychologically. The ghost of. Ghost of Pops gets in you. Daytona Pass. Right. Does that get you going? The Rainbow Warrior was right behind him, giving him a nice push. No, I didn't know. You didn't know? You didn't see, you didn't see, man. First of all, to me, the love Daytona, but it looks better when it's at night. Yeah. The colors of the yeah. cars, the lights, and the fact that these dudes are going at 199 yeah. miles an hour. Yeah. They got three. One time I looked, there was at least four rows that were three wide going into the turn. If that ain't. You got the need for speed. That's called an adrenaline. Now, me and Bundy, we talked about this. Would you love, would you want to do that one time? Yes. Would you want to drive or have a professional driver and you're the passenger? Oh, hell, yeah. I want to drive. Yeah, I would, I would want to drive. Yeah. Do you think you could get up there to the, how, 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 how high in speed do you think you could get to? Let me see. I had my charger up to 120. <laughs> The old road runner, <laughs> the old road runner charge. I, I ended up to one twenty. Right. I scared, bagged off of it then. <laughs> the the view just looks different when you go in that fast. Yeah, because everything is straight. There are no lines anymore. It is too bumpy. Huh? Right, right here is too bumpy. Yeah, but you know, you go around a track as big as Daytona. You know, you got plenty of time to see where you're going, where you at. Not to mention, you got those forty five. Two hundred well, mile an hour. You don't have plenty of time. You got the forty five degree angle banks and whatnot. Well, well, I, and the good thing about doing that, you're in a car you know that can do it. Yeah. So there's no question about whether or not you can get there. Yeah. Plus you ain't riding in a roll a roll cage. That's all. So you know you not can, driving a charger. Yeah. You could you could you could take a hit and climb out of it. Let me put it that way. Right. So, I was one thing I, I I really am liking is the the cockpit shots of the drivers now that they have it you know where you can see from their angle in the car mm -hmm. and the thing that I was impressed with I mean you, you see it all the time with racing but how guys are basically literally you're stuck, stuck right here so when you're making that left turn this is all you're doing straight left straight left that's all you're doing but imagine the wear on your body for 500 miles Cause you're doing. Well, you taking something about what about fifteen, about fifteen G's? Like yeah. Oh, incredible. when you're going to oh, it's in, and that's why, like I said, when you look in there, you see the helmet, the Hans device, how they're, it's like watching an astronaut yeah. on takeoff in a shuttle. But I still go back. I don't think people appreciate the skill of the drivers, cause you're riding, basically six inches. If that off you, you swapping paint. Right. And I'm doing I'm on you. Good Mike's one. to my right. I don't know who's flying up hard on my left. And I'm dropping down and coming out and And, and we're going four wide at two hundred miles an hour. That's and about, you know, two inches apart. And that's why what the the, 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 the finality of that last lap, there's always gonna be a crash at the end. Oh yeah! Every year when Daytona goes, that's because somebody trying to make a move. Because they, 
They try to move up. They may not win it, but they yeah. try to get some extra money. Well, and this year, once you win a race, you're in the chase at the end of the year, too. right? So, yeah. Well, I'm just telling you, I, you know, I'm I'm happy for Dale Jr. You know, with all the controversy he had between uh, the mother-in-law and basically. Did they ever get that straight now? Yeah, he, <laughs> she's like, "This is mine." <laughs> So he's driving for somebody else. Uh, that would be correct. And that's the reason why, like I say. They brought number three back. They, three. Got, they got their rookie. What's his name? Uh, I think it started with a B, if my memory serves. They did a little, they did a little segment on him before, mm -hmm. right. before is, the race. Is, is Junior driving for Childress or Hendrick? Childress. Childress, Childress yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the thing about the number three car, you see it was split in terms of the color. It was black and white. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the three was leaning different, too. Right. Well, all of that being said, Dale Jr., fantastic. I just would see, I'd like to see more nighttime NASCAR races. Well, they have about three or four of them. Right. But I'm, I'm just talking about it goes to what I said about the studio show. Imagine what it looked, you know, race starts at 11 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. People going to church, doing other things. Can't see it. <clears throat> but you change that and put that thing on at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. And weather's good, so you don't have any delays other than your natural delays, right, caution right. flags, stuff like that. You're st it's a wrap by 11. That's it. And people... And, and the picture, as you said, is so much better, particularly with the, you know, they're shooting everything in HD now. Right. Anyway, so... I, I just wish they would go to that, because I, I just think it would bring in more of your lay fans to watch NASCAR. All right. And with that, we're going to go to break. When we come back, we, we're going to go d dive into the news. Let me see what we got here. Uh, like I said, New Orleans Saints safety, Darren Sharper, he surrenders to L.A.'s police. He's suspected of sexual assaulting nine women in like five different states. Yeah. He's a serial assaulter. Yes, he is. And we're not talking about Captain Crunch. Also, uh, 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 Barry Switzer, he said he would never recruit a white quarterback. Hernandez, he already he already in prison for killing three people. Now he fighting in there now trying to kill a four. Yeah, he, he ain't fighting nobody now. It's yeah. all by him alone. So yeah. they solitary in that control. round room. Hole. Put him in a hole. Go find a corner. All right, and what else? Uh, I said we was going to bring up. We got that fish on the steel. Oh, the first female to play in a professional football game, 808 indoor, for, and they didn't block for the girl either. Uh, no. To this day. I'm like, come on, really? Let a 300-pound tackle just bust him. Right. And then he celebrates. Yeah, he jumps up she like he did. right back up. Right. Like, okay. Now, what, what did that say about him? That's the reason why he playing eight-on-eight eight indoor <laughs> football for the Texas Revolution. No, North Texas Crunch. Yeah. And we ain't talking about a cereal on that either. Hold on. And he, he, then he going to yell over to the sideline, come get it, come get it. This don't feel right. Yeah. No, what don't feel right is them not blocking right. And you going in and hitting that gal like that. Yeah, they peeled out. Huh? They peeled out on That's it. right. So we'll be back with more Talking Sports right after these. Welcome back. Talking Sports WBCP 1580 UPTV Channel 5. 5. 6. 7. 99. Hi. Omaha. No, don't do that. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. U-verse. Comcast, Xfinity, Veronica, Veronica's running the ship. You know when you were talking about a producer, go to camera one, camera one, three, mm -hmm. four, mm -hmm. three years. I see her doing it. Really? Yeah. One of them should go over there. Because kind of once she goes in for the interview and they're like, uh, so can you share some of your experiences? Uh, well, I did uh, talking sports. Yeah. You're hired. Yeah. Because anybody that can do, do that. that. You're hired. You're hired. Right. This interview's over. And then they just go in, like the current executive producer, they just go in and just wipe his desk. Mm -hmm. You sit right here, Veronica. Everybody else, out! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Give her a video screen. That's it. Go to work. So, like I said, Veronica's running the camera. Jazz is in there on the board. Sam's on the mic. And Captain Kirk is back here in the captain's chair. And I'm Chim Chill. Mm hmm now, now you, Space you, Ghost Monkey. Now, now y'all, Joe turned 50. When, when is your birthday, actually? This is not the, the birthday. Yeah, no, we're going no, 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 no. to talk about it, though, because you've been putting up all these mug shots up on Facebook. 
all day long. You see, y'all go on Facebook. Look at the one where he was in uh, what in Northern Illinois. See, now you already messed. That's I just, you. That's why I said let's I, not even talk about it. Cause you just destroyed my, the chronological order of what I've been doing. I put the little shot up there. Of, Mike even asked me. He's like, "Who's the little kid?" Oh, uh, so this is you growing. Because the picture oh, of the little kid oh, was cute. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, I screwed wait a minute. Then he says the kid was cute. Well, and then what happened? Look at you now. Bone, now you're it's, how old? It's called bone structure. Oh, okay. <laughs> when you're a kid, you have no bone structure. That's why all kids are cute. No, so, is so you, what Barry Bonds is saying that. No, 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 no. So you, you're putting your pictures in chronological order. You just finally figured that out. Yes, I did. When I put a picture up when I'm like four, and then I put a picture up when I'm in high school, then I put a picture up when I'm in college. And I'm like, no, you didn't. And I said, yes, I did. I mean, the rest of them were cool, but Joe. My college picture? Yeah. No, 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 that one was uh-uh. That's an ID picture. Who takes a good ID picture? You don't. <laughs> and, 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 and arguably nobody else. <laughs> Oh, man. But it's but, me. I know. It's me in my essence of that time period, the '80s, when everything was ugly. Looks a lot. The like clothes, that. the colors. We thought we were cool in the '80s. We weren't. We found that out in the '90s. That's why they didn't do that stuff. So that's how no I'm doing. No more in the '80s. I was just sharing. The '70s was cool. No. As bad as the '80s were. '70s was the best era in these United States. One, because it was never documented because you didn't have technology. No, because everybody <laughs> couldn't remember to write it down. No, that's true. That's because everybody was high. You said it. He did it. 70s was the best era in these United States history. I would concur. Thank you. Okay, well. I would. Thank you. But anyway. Moving on. All right. Oh, so so you want to tell people about the thing uh, next Saturday? No. Okay. Uh, what, what is your 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 obsession with that? Because I want everybody to be there, and I don't. That's the problem. Oh, you don't want everybody to be there. Why would I want everybody to be there, Sam? Okay. I take let, I take think, back every. Let, think, think about what, what you're saying. I know. I was thinking at the cost. Wait, you have none. You have none. It's free for me. But everybody else, come on. No, I'm just serious. All right, don't Secret come. Secret location. No, I will be 50 on March 9th. You're okay. here. Look, look, look. That's the face of a 50-year-old. That's the face of... Come on. <laughs> the 70s. Cro-Magnum. The 70s. I'm 46. Don't let them fool y'all. But if he was a tree and you cut him in half and counted his rings. I'm a youthful 43, let me put it that way. 43. 46, I'm sorry. You see, you can't even, you, you've you already implicated yourself with the first lie. 46. That's why you'd be like Darren Sharp. Yeah. Segway. Uh, he turned himself into the police, uh, Los Angeles police yesterday. Now, he's wanted down in New Orleans for two counts of sexual assault. He's also been implicated in what, Nevada? Nevada. Arizona, Florida, Florida, and California. So if you were in the panhandle, you know, the, the southern region of the United States, and you came in contact with Darren Sharper. And you woke up with your underpants down around your ankles. and <laughs> <laughs> Darren Sharper standing there looking at you. Hey, baby. What's that? What, what it, what Call it, your local authorities. Yes. I think what it does, two things, on obviously a serious note. The old judge a book by his cover. You know, the old, I, I couldn't believe, I'm shocked. Why? He's a human. Mm-hmm. All humans have frailties. And those humans who have those type of frailties need to be removed but, from society. But he preyed on these women. Right, and that's why I'm, and why did he, pray? because they looked at him, he's an He's athlete. Saw, yep, I saw dollar sign. Good looking guy, sharp dresser. In the media, money, all the things that are the webs of the spider to pull that fly in and then do whatever dirty deeds he That's had. That's the reason done. why I don't have any problems. <laughs> well, you're not a short dresser. No, I have no He's mind. not human. No, I have no mind. He's the fly juice. <laughs> no. well, seriously, though. 
He could get up to. Uh, he could be gone. Thirty years per count. Per count. I think in Louisiana it's life in prison. I thought it was just throw you in a swamp. That's life in prison. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, you know, maybe if we had a. Uh, uh, Dr. Bates here, you know, she could explain why an athlete would want to do these things. What, what, what's going on in his mind? Well, any, any, anybody's anybody. mind. And that's the that, point. That was, that's what, what that she was, was pointing out, is that we continue to talk about athletes in a separate like category yeah, as opposed to the fact that they're human. He's human. And because he's human, but the fact that he's an athlete, we tend to look at athletes in a different light and put them in a different category. And if an athlete is articulate and good looking and we see them after their career is over, sharp dressed, telling jokes on the NFL network or pregame shows and stuff like that, we I think that's one of the other things. We tend to kind of take ownership of athletes like we know them. Have no clue who they are in terms of their real personalities. But because it's projected onto a 2D screen. And we see them on Sundays, and if they play for our favorite team, that makes it even worse. Now, right. now, now, see, but see, Sharper will hold, like, like little uh, training camps mm -hmm. for females only. Yes. And what? the dude that was arrested with him, uh, well, he turned himself in today because they had a arrest warrant for him, too. Uh, I had his name right here. Eric Nunez, mm -hmm. who was sort of like a, uh, he called himself an NFL promoter. So he promote all things NFL. Right. So and he, Matt, he was promoting these little mini camps that Sharper were doing for women only. Right. Oh, I bet there's a conspiracy charge coming. There you go. But but do you think uh, 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 now, you know, now he doing this. I mean, you know, he using NFL mini camp for female. Mm -hmm. Do you think that maybe that these women could possibly sue the NFL. the NFL because of what he did? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think it would, it would depend on whether he was a, when, when the alleged assaults took place, if he was an active NFL player and was he using the NFL logo, if they can prove the NFL knew about it, then there's some culpability there, I would think. But well, he works, he was an analyst for the NFL Network when this stuff was going on. He was not removed from the NFL Network until the first arrest. So going to your point about one of the things that we got to remember when you're talking about uh, a civil trial, it's just a preponderance of the evidence. Right. Right. Well, well, no, this, 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 this will be going no. through the legal system. Now, a civil trial, that's something entirely different. And that's the point we're making about that's what, where you get the NFL involved. This is just a criminal accusation about the assaults and the rape. But if these women want to, as you said, go after the NFL, that would be in a civil trial, and they're trying to get compensated for any of his alleged acts. And that occurs. Going back, let's go back to what we talked about, the studio audience. What's the NFL been trying to do for years? Increase female viewership. And so now what do you do? You take an ambassador. You take a Darren Sharper, 14 years in the league, Super Bowl champ, played in two Super Bowls. Pro Bowler. Pro Bowler. You know, you go through all of that. But we're going to go through the phone lines, 359-9227. Talking sports, talk to us, caller. Well, from what I'm listening to you all, right now, what you all are saying about his career, good-looking man, good-looking black man, physically fit, he's done this and done that. Somewhere along the line, you're saying, someone said, you can't judge a book by its cover. Right now, you all are judging him as guilty. That's what you're doing. And you never know. This is radio. You never know who's out there that's from those respective cities that could be in the jury pool and really don't know anything about it. And from what you all are saying now, this man is guilty. And that one juror could possibly put him away. That's all I have to say. Appreciate you're going to judge a book by its cover right now. You're doing a good job. Appreciate your call. Call us anytime. Talk to sports. WBCP 1580. UPTV. Channel 6. 99. Nine, nine. Versus. Take care, sir. Yes, we are judging the book by its cover because that's what we do. 
Yeah. We, we judge teams. We judge leagues. We judge players because that's what talk radio is all about. That's, that's what and just is. like the caller stated, he's got an opinion. We have an opinion. Yeah, this, this is just our opinion. And, and you know, I mean, we're just not just throwing this out here. You know, we have, or oh, I, well, I'm probably sure Joe them had too. I, now, we, we didn't looked into this before. We're just not sitting up here just talking right. to be talking. Yeah, this has been an issue that's been out there for several months now in terms of Darren Sharper, and the allegations aren't from just Los Angeles. The allegations just aren't from New Orleans. As we indicated earlier, he is being implicated in sexual assaults and rape in five different states in the lower portion of the United States. Now, if we want to talk about uh, your... Uh, innocent until proven guilty that's a standard used where in our legal system i'm not a judge i'm not an attorney i'm someone speaking my opinion based on information that we have received this is the court of public opinion that we're in and when you're in the court of public opinion yes you can make judgments we do it every day i object your honor <laughs> overruled there so you you've been overruled Carry on. All right. But back to the sh- what we were talking about earlier um, in terms of the NFL being implicated in this, there's a strong chance. You think about what has happened in terms of the issues with concussions. We talked last week about the Michael Sam case. We talked about what happened with Richie Incognito and Jonathan Martin and how the NFL, you know, that was a workplace issue. Once again, this is just another thing that Roger Goodell is saying right now as he's on this Stairmaster, what in the world? Oh, my God. What, what else do I have to do Dude. to get these kids <laughs> right. to act right? And and that's the toughest part. And back to what you said about Dr. Bates, this is what her emphasis is, is the fact that we're talking about an individual. An individual. Who just happened to be an athlete. There you go. So I think that's one of the things that uh, uh, boils down to what we're talking about here, and caller makes an excellent point that we are making judgment. I agree with it. We are, we are making a judgment. It will we do based on information. It will we do. There you go. But uh, I'm pretty sure that, uh, well, it's possible, seeing how we're streaming all over the world right now, that some potential juror might hear our conversation and, and then find him guilty, and, and we're responsible for yeah. Darren Sharp. I heard him on Talking Sports talking about it. Well, if they think he's guilty, I know he's guilty. guilty. Well, if there's a juror out there that's listening, give us a call. Let hear your opinion. 217-359-9227. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, I'm doing that. Right you're now. just the one favorite, like Keith Oldman. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 Keith Hernandez. I'm not Keith Hernandez. Aaron. Aaron Hernandez. Keith Hernandez, he played baseball. Right. Mets. St. Cardinal. Louis, too, for a little while. Uh, Aaron Hernandez. Guy. Aaron Hernandez, uh, he's locked up for possibly being implicated in three murders. But he's innocent until proven guilty. That's right. Wink, wink. OJ. Uh, he beat up somebody in, in jail. What was that? Uh, a couple, three days ago. Yeah. A yeah. week ago, something like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, dude. I guess dude looked at him funny and. In the child line, they was walking down the hall. I think it was a setup, though. You know how to see it on TV. Right. Yeah, he walking down one way, the other dude walking down another way, and then you just Next. jump on the beam. <laughs> Next thing you know, the trays fly up in the air. <laughs> there goes your green beans and corn. Yeah. Those whistles going on. Oh, so you going to eat that? <laughs> Next thing you know, they, you're getting yeah. shanked, and the uh, extract unit is coming in. They've got the mask on, spraying you with pepper spray. But, uh... So he's in solitary confinement now. Well, I guess his trial's supposed to start sometime in the fall. October, middle of October. Uh, what's, up, what's up with that? I guess it's giving the legal team time to, you know, get his stuff together. Well, they're, they're not judging a book by its cover. Yeah. They want to actually read the book. Yeah. From front to back. Yeah, because they're not going to let this dude go. No. When they say guilty on that one, yeah, I, th- I think if you think about when you watch this Aaron Hernandez deal play out, I remember every day they'd go to his house, cameras would be outside, he'd come out, jump in his car, take off. Right. You see the detectives coming out with bags of this and bags of that. And, you know, then the girlfriend, she gets arrested. 
obstruction of justice and I will say this I won't I won't judge his book by his cover but I've seen this book before mm -hmm. right? I don't need to read this one mm -hmm. don't, you, don't even need to wait for the movie to come out and I ain't worried about taint no Drew pool on this one mm -hmm. they gonna get him for the one in Connecticut too I think that's the reason why it takes so long because they trying to put all the pieces together oh absolutely that Make sure all the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed. Because, I mean, he's a name. That's it. And particularly in that part of the country, he's a big name. name right. Or he was a big name. All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, we got the instant replay. Uh, the young lady named Jennifer Welters became the first female to play in a professional football. And she's not the only. Back in the 70s, they had a lady that cooked, kicked, uh, did some kicking for proteins back in the day, but this is the first female to play in a professional football game, 8 on 8 Indoor Football League with the Texas Revolution. Mm -hmm. You seen the video? She's 36 years old. She had three carries in this game mm -hmm. for negative one yards. Bless well, her heart. And why was that? Didn't nobody block. Oh, they blocked. Didn't nobody. They... If you haven't seen the video of this, go on YouTube and Look it up, but they were down on the goal line. Yeah, like the two, two right? If, yeah, it reminded me a lot of Illinois last year. <laughs> <laughs> no, they did. Yeah, they did. Ball snap, and next thing you know, it was like they went over a smoke. They turned around, hand the ball off to the young lady, and then you didn't see nobody with the same color jersey she had on in front of her. No, she on that side of the field all by herself. And next thing you know, Bubba. here comes a three hundred. And some odd pound defensive tackle pancaking her. Yeah. And then he had the nerve to get up and celebrate. What's she asking, love? Is that all you got? That all you got? Punk. Sissy. Chump. That's why you're not Sissy. <laughs> Jive turkey. Yeah, that was crazy, though. Do some weight. No blocking at all. No. All right. Now, what? Why, why, why would you do this, though? Well, you know, there's still some lame idiot Neanderthals whose knuckles drag. No, the coach put her in the ball game. Right. I'm not talking about the coach. I'm talking about her teammates. Her teammates. She plays on the same team. Not blocking for her hurts you, you dummy. Mm -hmm. Blocking for her if she scores helps your team win. But they were already winning like some like 60, I mean 50 Blocking something. for her. Uh -huh. Allows you to be part of history. Because right. now it's the first female who scores a touchdown. In right. a professional football game. Not, I love a good pancake. Ah. <laughs> That's what it was. Right. You see how stupid that sounds? Yes. But that's. I would have liked to have been at that next practice. I don't know who the coach is. But... I don't I... know if I'd have wanted to be at that next practice because she made have showed up with a pistol. Yeah. <laughs> Or they might still be running. Right. Oh, you don't want to block for me? Which way you want it? Straight or sideways? Yeah, yeah. They didn't they didn't block for it at all. At least you know. Because you know, I'm thinking, oh, this is an easy touchdown right now. Right, that's right. For when, a yard when, or two out. When you look at the video and the way they're lined up, you yeah. think it's all she gotta do is follow the point of the spear, yeah. run up the gut, run touch up the gut, oh, but she ran off tackle. And they were nobody blocked. Mm mm. They just turned and looked at her. You all right? <laughs> Jennifer. Yeah, didn't even help us. Yeah. All right, what else we got? Uh, Barry, Barry Switzer said he would never have recruited a white quarterback. Quote, unquote, the only way I would ever recruit a white quarterback to play for me, his mama and his daddy would both have to be black. And that's the only way I would do it. Now, see, I think the issue here is context. Barry Switzer ran the wishbone. And he if you go further into the interview, he talked about the three quarterbacks he had in terms of J.C. Watts, mm -hmm. Bill Holloway, uh, I'm trying to think of the third guy. And he's, uh, no, he's, in Nebraska. he's in Nebraska. But he talked about the fact it was a, he said, my quarterbacks had to run like fullbacks. They also had to be able to throw the football. Now, when Barry Switcher was coaching, throwing the football meant throwing it to Keith Jackson, the tight end, 
maybe three times a game. But they did not throw the football. So in the context of that statement, you know, it, it's not like Barry Switcher was the uh, spread type quarterback, you know, that was, you know, throwing the thing 40 and 50 times a game. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so sometimes when, you know, guys make these kind of statements to try to create controversy, all you got to do is the context of when they coached and what system they coached. And like I said, they were straight wishbone. Now he now he coached the uh, the Cowboy Cowboys, Cowboys. Mm-hmm. and he's currently what's it Oklahoma uh, something like AD that or something like that. I believe, yeah, I believe he's the athletic director out there. I'm not sure, or he was. I know that. Now the, the other thing they have to remember what this interview was about. They initially started off with talking about Johnny Manziel. Yeah, exactly. And he said he likes the way he plays, but you know he's a little renegade, and you know he talked about every player's got a little renegade in him, and you know he kind of likes that in some players, but. He would have told Manziel off. So the problem I've got in twofold. Number one, we sit here and talk for an hour and a half, hour, 40 minutes. And like, for example, what we just had with the caller saying, you know, judging a book by a cover. Somebody takes a snippet right, of an entire conversation and then tries to sensationalize it to make news out of it. When the actuality is what he said, if you put it in the context of when he coached college football, and the system he ran. But come on now. How many Caucasian quarterbacks did you have running the that wishbone? System, right. Very few. Well, and you, you also have to factor in what <coughs> you were saying, what the rest of the interview was about. I mean, you can't just take out two or three lines out of an interview mm-hmm. and try to sensationalize it like certain. That's what journalism is. Yeah, but. No, you, you got, that's you not know, journalism. Yeah. You, that's yeah. what, you you you're selling you're selling newspapers you you are selling uh, uh, that's uh, national the National Enquirer that's what that is if you're saying selling newspaper is taking a piece to turn it into the headline you know when editors sit down and say okay we got to sell the story of Sergeant Rock find something find something on Rock that's what that's what they do that's so what they, they do until they, yep. so they find something on Rock that's what you they know, do you know and that would uh. Mr. White, Perry White, Jimmy Olsen. I'm dating myself again. Yeah, you go. Who is that? Superman. Man. The Daily Planet. Not that old when they used to run into the phone book. Right. Well, and, you, and think about it. All superheroes, most of them work for a newspaper. Peter Parker. Right. right. What, what's that? About? Well, they all work for tights, too. Hmm. Makes you wonder. Just what, you know, somebody was talking about in one of the earlier breaks. Right. And what a woman ever have a job. Yeah, she worked in the uh, government office. <laughs> Next. <laughs> uh, uh, which forms I got to fill out, Wonder Woman? Uh, these right here. Uh, <laughs> fill, fill out, all right. Because I'm going to put the lasso of truth around you. Not even sure if our producer knows who Wonder Woman is. She didn't even grin. Right, she's like, whatever. Yeah, she, Just go to a break. No, we we're not, we don't have one. All right, uh, what have we got? Uh, New Mexico State guard K.C. Ross Miller threw a ball at a Utah Valley Holton Husk Saker. Uh, after the game was over, he picked up the basketball, just threw it at the dude. Fans rushed the court. Fight ensued. He was rushed off the court. This is the video has went, but it wasn't where to use viral. viral. So, uh, so what do you think should happen to this young man? He's game's been, over. Be he picks up the ball. At least three, three games. games. At least three games. This is the Marcus Smart. Uh, we should call this the uh, factor. Mar- Marcus Smart factor. That any time you behave out of the context of your sport, doing something like that, automatic three games. Three games. Marcus Smart rule. Yeah, that's it. No, this this is this is on court action. He still. He went after a fan. fan. He did something to a fan. Or a player, fan. No, player. He right. threw player. The, he, sorry. Sorry, the, the horn has sounded. And he threw the ball. He picked up the basketball, threw it at the guy. Mm-hmm. Well, and if you hit him, it should be at least five days. Right? But if he missed. I think he should be kicked off the team. Well, that. Unsportsmanlike right. contact. I can't have that kind of behavior, unsportsmanlike behavior on my ball club. Yeah, but now let's go back to Dr. Bates. We're talking about a human being. He lost it for a second. I'm, I'm being devil's advocate. I'm being Dr. Bates right now. Why do you want to do that? Uh, I mean, it's just for I mean, interesting you conversation. Even, you don't even look like it. Let alone trying to beat it. 
that would probably be because I'm a man. So why do I want to listen to Jake from State Jake Farm? Farm? Because he's a guy. That's why. You, anyway. You sound hideous. So, you Mike it. said it. Three should be the minimum. Maybe five if he makes contact. Have you seen the video? Yes. You seen it, Mike? I have not. Oh, okay. And so that's what I'm saying. What did he do? The Mark Smart rule, as he called it. He lost composure and perspective of where he was at. His opponent, he attacked his opponent. Did he attack him physically with his hands? Nah. He threw a basketball at him. Is he going to hurt the guy? Nah, I mean. But the point is, you just said it. We cannot have that kind of behavior. Not only on your team, we can't have that kind of behavior. Period. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you look at the Northwestern kid that got into it with the Ohio State player. Mm-hmm. He threw a punch. He didn't even get close. And he's gone for at least a game, I think, the yep. next game or two. That's it. How are you going to throw a punch? Well, you he know, didn't want to hit nobody. No first way. of all, you know, bas- <laughs> basketball. The worst fighters are basketball and baseball players. Soccer players. Yeah. Well, so- oh, they, no, they're the best actors. <laughs> oh, I'm out. And then they come out with that old mash. 4077 yeah, stretcher, stretcher. <laughs> put him on it. What I'd with love the, to see. With the vest with the little white cross thing on it. I would yeah. love to see him running with a guy and then kind of dump him. Yeah. There's somebody behind him with that little air. Right. Air and get him off of there. But yeah, I, I mean, is it a big deal? Nah. It's just set a standard. But it's, it's, a, it's a teaching moment. That's it. So, you know, Marcus Smart. Will. That's Three it. Games Three games you got to go. That's it. I'm kicking him off, team. Well, and, like. and you know what? That's uh, was it New Mexico State. Yeah. You know, it's Lou Henson's former school, so I mean, that's on the coach to make that decision and mm-hmm. the athletic director. You know, because nobody knows if the kid's been a problem before, if he hasn't, if it's a you know just one incident or whatever. But well, the AD is supposedly reviewing the tape, and I guess he'll be making a decision here sometime too. All right, local stuff, Joe. We got uh, 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 little league sign up going on. Little league sign up in my hands right here. I hold the online registration cheat sheet. You know, if people want, you know, like I said, Little League signups are going on right now. Uh, if you want to go on to firststringinc.org, uh, you'll, on the webpage, it'll say www.eteams.com backslash firststringinc. Click on that. There's an orange button that says registration. And then you just go through and fill up. So you can populate your registration paperwork by going online and not coming out for actual walk-in registration. Now, tomorrow, Saturday, they've been having uh, skills and drills down at Douglas Center uh, for the past couple of Saturdays. So if you have an athlete from the age of 4 to 12. For baseball? For baseball. They've been doing skills and drills. Ages uh, 4 through 8 is 11.30 to 12.30. Ages 9 through 12 are from 11.45 to uh, uh, 12.45 to 1.45. So 11.30 to 12.30 for the 4 through 8, and then 12.45 to 1.45 for 9 through 12. In terms of the uh, skills and drills, and you can sign up. Depending on the age of your athlete, your cost would be anywhere from $50 to $75. They have gloves, limited amount, nice gloves too. Rawlings. Oh yeah, man. Uh, so you, fifteen you, bucks. If you don't have a glove, you, you can you can buy a glove down there. Fifteen bucks. Fifteen bucks. That's cheap. Cheap. It's a giveaway. Yeah. Giveaway. So point right. is, get them out and get them registered early. Because I know the weather. I know right now it's not baseball weather, but in six weeks the season starts. I think that's what why we're pushing this is that. Little League Baseball starts the second week of April. So we've got to get the kids registered so they can be divided up on the teams so the teams can start practicing when weather allows so they can be ready to go second week of April. So either come out to Douglas tomorrow uh, from 1130 to 145 and register with walk-in registration or go online to firststringinc.org and you can register online there. So that's what's going on. Other local stuff, basketball, girls basketball. Tonight, St. Thomas Moore plays in the semifinals of state for 2A basketball. Toy McCoy, uh, the local sensation. Everybody's she's just a sophomore. They got the state championship last year and lost. 
return trip this they year. They have been there two years in a row and lost. They haven't they? No. If my memory serves me correctly. Your memory, put, take that thing off. <laughs> I'm sitting here telling you what's happening, and you just jump in to say I'm something just, is. Or tighten that thinking cap. There you go. St. Thomas Moore's, this is their second year going, Sam. Oh, okay. So that means that last year was the first year. So they can't lose it two years in a row if they haven't been there. I, I was just thinking that I heard it somewhere where they had been there. Stop twice. thinking. Stop thinking and stop listening. We good now? Yeah. All right. Don't make me turn to Dr. Bates and put you on the couch. But, yeah, that's what's going on with the girls who, boys who, uh, last week of regular season play for the big boys, 3A, 4A. So you'll have senior night. Champagne Central will have senior night tonight. And, uh, don't know if Centennial's got a home game or not. Uh, but then next week, the regional starts, and it's at Central. So to give you a breakdown, on Monday, Urbana will play Rantoul. On Tuesday, the winner of the Urbana-Rantoul game plays Centennial. On Wednesday, Champaign Central will play Muhammad. And then on Friday, the winner of the Tuesday and Wednesday games will play for the championship of the Champaign Regional. And the winner of that will then go to the Matt Toon section. So March Madness, because tomorrow is High March School staff. It is, man. The original March Madness, where'd you start? Right here. State of Illinois. Bet y'all didn't know that, did you? Right. There you go. A little, a little history right there. That's it. Now, you were, uh, you know, pushing so hard earlier about my birthday. I will be 50 on March 9th. I don't care now. You told me to let it go. I was just letting you know when it was happening. <laughs> you were talking about <laughs> other stuff. As you said, I don't think about the car. I just think about myself. Yeah, blah, well, blah, 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 Just because you wore your thinking cap today, you think you're so smart. So what's your point? My point is, just because your head shaped like a bullet don't mean... It runs that fast. There you go, and, and, and other stuff. You know, it's a good thing we on the air right now. Because I, I got a mouth full, but I'm going to let, let you have as soon as you flip that knob back over to the we, That's why we're not going to flip it. We're going to keep it. Them All buckshots right. ain't coming after me. All right, what else we got here? We got, we got five minutes left. You know, my first glove cost me $75. You got to take it. I thought there was a <laughs> hole. Hmm? <laughs> what, what, are you trying to be funny? No, what he's saying is that you you bought a uh, latex glove for $75, didn't you? Oh, that, oh, uh, oh trying to make it funny. Snap. Oh, oh. Turn around, Mr. Britton. I got one for you, too. Mm. All right, what else we got? Mm. Any, any, anything else? We got, we got five minutes to kill. Uh, Floyd Mayweather has announced his uh, next opponent. No. He will fight Marcus Mardana. Who? That, that would be a good, your good, good owl invitation there. Uh, May 3rd. That's on his birthday. Uh, Is he 52? If he gets beat, he'll feel like he's 50. He'll find out. Now, if people, when you said who on Mardana, he's the guy who just beat Adrian Broner, uh, a protege of Floyd Mayweather. So, this is like the big brother going back to revenge the beatdown that the little brother took. So that's what's happening here. Okay. And Mayweather is also, you know, he's trying to inch closer to that 50 milestone. If everybody, if you're a boxing fan, you know Marciano was 49 and 0. You know, he whooped Joe Lewis's ass. Well, we hope he do. Uh, well, I got one more thing. Uh, you know, last year Michael Jordan made, I mean, two, uh, made something like a ridiculous 190 million dollars. Ninety million. Ninety million. Well, you know, <clears throat> I've ventured off into the <laughs> shoe market. I have a shoe coming out in April. Ground stars. They call starting stripes. <laughs> they. <laughs> oh, you can order them now. Just give can me we wait till later? Any no, color. Yeah, you can get them in any color. You, you can order them now. Just give me a call down here at the station three five nine. Nine two two seven. Uh, I'm gonna put some up on my Facebook page and a little ordering form, so you can order some. Nineteen ninety nine. That's all they cost. That's all they cost. And buy one, get one free. Well, technically all shoes. I, I said that earlier. Technically all shoes are buy one get one. <laughs> buy one get one free. But seriously, folks, Sergeant Stripe, you get these shoes, you won't be disappointed. <laughs> you said you was gonna bring your nineteen ninety nine. It's in my pocket, but I haven't seen the prototype yet. Oh, okay. 
I'm going to draw it up for you. <laughs> Wait a minute. You got to draw it up. I thought you already had them. <laughs> no, well, it, come on now. They're still, they're still in at the factory. They're still being manufactured. They're still in R&D. You're right. You got to. Right up here. <laughs> you going to come out with a flip-flop with a sock in it. <laughs> there's, a, there's a little E5 echelon thing on Seriously, folks. Seriously, folks. And your slogan's going to be left, left, <laughs> left, <laughs> right, left. 1999, that's all they call. That's all they call. Sergeant Stripes, get them at your yeah. local retailers now. Wait till you see the commercial spot. I don't want to. I don't even want to see the shoe. All right. Uh, You're getting some for your birthday. <laughs> no. Complimentary pair. The first one to roll off the assembly line. Sergeant yeah. Strikes. And he's going to bill you for a lot Right. <laughs> Shipping and handling, not included. $92. Uh, what is this? Come on. What now. is this? I'm giving you a quality shoe at a low price. Veronica's got places to go, man. I'm just going to put it that way. Oh, okay. She don't want to hear no more about the Sergeant Stripes. Stripes Sergeant. Shoot, she don't want to. I got ladies too. Major nuisance. <laughs> They're going to be ladies. For la they going to have... Veronica. See, look at that. She gave me the thumbs up. She gonna want to pick. That wasn't a thumb. <laughs> I <laughs> can't see it on camera, but that was not a thumb she gave me. Pick up a pair of these shoes today. All right, that's gonna do it for this edition of Talking well, Sports. Talk Thursday. No, April. 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 You can actually see the shoe developing inside <laughs> the shoe. <laughs> All right. That, right. That starts smoking. Five dollar foot long. That's gonna do it for this edition of Talking mm -hmm. Sports. We do this each and every Friday mm -hmm. from two to four. So you be sure and tune mm -hmm. in again next week. We'll lace up the sergeant stripes and we'll do it again. <laughs> See you, Mike. Yes, I. Uh, you'll have to find somebody else to fill the captain's chair next Friday. No problem. Yo. Yeah. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. I'll judge every book by his color. Here we go. <clears throat> 1999 any color you want get your sergeant stripes today 1799 for OD green